Assalamu alaikum and bismillahir rahman rahim today we are going to start with the lecture number 5 and the title of this lecture uh, is memory access so in this lecture we will discuss what are the memory access techniques uh, in that lecture we also discussed uh, that in pentium 4 they have the 16 4 bit registers with 64 bit extension uh, the extension was uh, in the name like RAX, RBX and so on and they have also other registers like R8 to R15 so in 8-bit the names of registers were like ABC, uh, D uh, and st stack pointer, program counter and so on for the 16-bit they have the EAX then 32-bit and 64-bit so here in this uh, in previous lecture uh, there was also microprocessor that they, they contain some instruction pointer registers like IP EIP or RIP and so on and there was a flag register and the representation for the flag register for 16 bit like flags or E flags and R flags for 32 and 64 bit representation now in this lecture we will discuss these uh, topics. The main topic that we will discuss here is the memory access. Uh, there are two modes in which uh, memory is being accessed in, inside the microprocessor. Uh, now first mode is real mode memory addressing technique and second mode is called the protected mode memory addressing technique. So memory access there is also another technique which is called the flat memory model or flat memory addressing um, method or technique uh, that is used in 64-bit architecture and the last thing that we will discuss uh, during this lecture is the program invisible registers like in 802862 core 2 microprocessors now these two uh, uh, these registers are not available in uh, 80 86 or 88 but they are available in the 80286 and the uh, higher architectures now we will discuss uh, the real mode memory addressing uh, what is inside this real mode memory ad addressing how we will address any data or code or anything inside the memory uh, by using this real mode memory addressing uh, here this is the only mode uh, real memory mode our real mode memory addressing is the only mode available in 8086 and 8088 there is not any protected uh, mode available in 8088 however protected and real mode our modes are available in 80286 and the higher architectures so there are 20 bit addresses as we discussed in previous uh, lecture uh, that 20 bit address is there for the 8086 uh, it means we can only access up to 1 MB uh, and 16 bit data bus we already knew that there is 16 bit data bus and there are 16 bit registers and that was uh, due to the 16 bit register we call it as a 16 bit architecture now in 80286 and above they operate in either real or protected mode so this is the only uh, real mode is only available in 8086 uh, so that was the reason we are starting with the 8086 so same technique uh, is available for the uh, higher arch higher architectures and then also we will discuss about the protected uh, mode memory addressing now what are the real mode operations these operation allow addressing of only the first one megabyte of memory space even in Pentium 4 or other higher architectures, uh, um, higher architecture microprocessor. So this first one megabyte of memory is called real memory or conventional memory or DOS memory system. So there are different names for this first one MB of the main memory. Now there is a concept of segments and offsets. Uh, previously we discussed about the segment registers like code segment data segment extra segment and stack segment there were this uh, registers for these uh, segmentation so all real mode memory addresses must consist of a segment address plus 
the offset address. So if we will discuss how we can use segment plus offset to access the memory. So what is segment address? This segment address defines uh, the beginning address of any 64k byte memory segment. So it means in 8088 um, memory is divided into only 64 kilobyte uh, memory segments or memory sections. Either it is code segment, data segment, stack segment or the extra segment. And this segment address is the beginning means I, where our memory segment for example it starts from here so up to here or maybe uh, in different models it is shown like it starts from here and then it moves in the upper or lower direction depends how we represent memory from where uh, 0, 0, 0, 0 address starts and where is the FFF uh, the final address of the memory is and the offset address so base address is the starting address. Now we have the offset address. This offset address selects any location within the 64 kilobyte uh, memory segment. For example, base address or uh, segment address is here or maybe here. Now what we will do, we have an, on another offset address. So we have offset. What we will do, we will add in some mechanism segment and offset to access uh, to assess any location within this memory for example if we want uh, we have segment address here and then we have offset address here we will combine them in some manner to access the to assess any of the memory location inside this segment so there's one figure in the next slide we will see uh, that will show that uh, how segment plus offset addressing scheme selects uh, memory location. So here you can see uh, there's a full memory. Uh, its uh, hexadecimal addresses are shown here. So either they are represented as 000, zero, zero so it's obvious that they are in hexadecimal. Otherwise, until um, means they are also represented like 000, zero, zero and H and up to FFF, H, so on. Here you can see there are how many how many uh, hexadecimal digits like five digits. So five digits means twenty bits are binary digits. So twenty bits. So this memory is twenty bit uh, memory. Uh, we are going to divide this twenty bit memory, uh, not whole memory, but some part of this memory, uh, in sixty four kilobyte segments. Here you can see we have a segment register. I don't uh, it's not mentioned what segment register is that either code segment extra segment data segment or stack segment whatsoever but this is a segment register it has a uh, 16 bit value here you can see 16 bit value actually this address is 20 bits is 20 bits but segment re uh, segment register is 16 bits so we can only store 16 bits inside this segment register and we have also uh, offset register that is also uh, 16 bits sorry uh, that is also 16 bits so by combining these two bits in some manner what we can get we can assess the memory location so this is the address like if we combine this one with this one we will get one f zero 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 how we can combine because you know here there are four hexadecimal digits and there are four hexadecimal digits here if we add them in some manner like one zero 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 like this one and f zero 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 like this one actually if we add them directly here then it will be like something uh, one uh, zero zero and so on so it's not a correct uh, combination we will see how we will combine these addresses uh, these two addresses uh, two values uh, one in the segment register another one is the offset register to form this uh, address so here in this figure it shows the memory segment beginning at the one zero 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 hexadecimal and ending at the one ff so this is the end and this is the starting and end of this so this is complete 64 kb segment its length is 64 kilobytes and also 
and this figure also shows uh, how an offset address called and uh, this offset is uh, address is also called displacement uh, so displacement value is f000 so when we combine them uh, the memory location uh, will be 1f000 so this is an example now when we combine these two segment plus offset or displacement uh, we will get the address of any memory location inside the segment that type of address uh, is called the effective address or effective memory address or EA whatsoever you can call it uh, like EA or uh, effective address so this address uh, is a combination of 20 bit segment a start address plus 16 bit offset so previously we saw that segment was 16 bits but how it will become 20 bits what we will do uh, so this is a segment start address like 1000 uh, this value was inside the segment register whatsoever the segment register is there we will append this register by 4 bits uh, to make it 20 bits now after appending what we have to do we have to uh, add these two so after uh, appending it will be 1000 now we will add F000 and then in the result we will get 1F00 in hexadecimal. So this is the way we can get the uh, effective address. So this was the example. Um, this is the way we can uh, access any memory location uh, inside the segmentation or seg uh, real mode real memory mode or real mode access mode okay so how we can calculate this is the uh, segment register segment register we can get this one by multiplying 10h by multiplying 10 in hexadecimal so instead of appending uh, the same operation is called the multiplying with 10 so it will append like 0 here and if we add uh, 0023 so it will be uh, this is the offset or the displacement so if we add the effective address will be 10023 in hexadecimal and so on <coughs> similarly here uh, the segment register is AAF0 AAF0 so this AAF0 is the value inside the segment register. We will multiply with the 10 hexadecimal, 10 hexadecimal value. Uh, it will be uh, AAF00 and we will add the offset. So this is the offset value and so on. So, so on and so forth. You can get the value in hexadecimal like this one for the effective address. Now, segments. Uh, and offsets if we know once we know the beginning or the starting address uh, which is uh, uh, inside the segment register the ending address is found by adding FFFH this is the maximum value which we can store inside the offset because it is 16 bit so if we know the starting address uh, where what is the starting address so we can calculate for example uh, this is the starting address so we can calculate what is the maximum size of the uh, what is the maximum address or uh, the last address of the segment so because the real mode segment memory is 64k in length so the offset as address is always added to the segment a starting address or segment uh, register value to look at the data and segment and off offset address uh, they are sometimes re they have some special representations sometimes in in different books when you will study about the addressing schemes and if we want to address uh, any memory location then we have the best address or we can saw the starting address or segment register value plus offset so segment address for example is this one and the offset is this one so it is represented like this one so for example if I ask you what will be the address which we can access by using this segment and a start address the answer should be first we will append 0 then we will add 
two zero 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 so it will be one two and zero zero and so on so this is the method which we use uh, to assess the memory location in a real mode uh, and then we have discussed about the segment address and the offset address but there are some special registers that we previously discussed in the uh, previous lecture uh, the like code segment uh, stack segment and other segments so microprocessor has rules that apply to segments whenever memory is addressed so these define the segment and offset register combination there is a special combination between the uh, segment register and the offset register now code segment register define the start of the code segment similarly a stack segment uh, register define the start of the stack uh, segment or stack area where we store data or something uh, inside the stack higher uh, data structure and the instruction pointer if we want to locate instruction if we want to locate instruction inside the uh, code segment because uh, we have uh, when we will write uh, programs in assembly we have to store programs somewhere in memory definitely without uh, a storing program it's not possible to execute program so for example this is the uh, starting address of the code segment so this is code seg code segment this is the starting address and there is also one offset so this instruction pointer is the register that stores the address of the next instruction that is to be executed if we want if there is one instru instruction that is being executed uh, at that time the instruction pointer is updated with the new value that value is the value or the debt address uh, is the address of the next instruction that will be executed so how it will calculate it will use the code segment register uh, code segment register value and the offset value so the instruction pointer locates the next instruction within the so there is another uh, default combination for the stack and that combination is that if we want to uh, access the stack then uh, this stack address or stack any memory location inside the stack is referenced by either the stack pointer so this is the pointer which locates uh, any address inside the stack so we need uh, a stack segment register plus offset register or it can be used them um, by the base pointer so in the next slide we will show a system that contains <coughs> four memory segments for example memory segment can touch or overlap in 64 bytes of memory uh, that are not required um, for segments okay here we can see the memory full memory there are four segments one is this side is called this section is called data segment then we have code segment and then we have a stack segment and the extra segment now here you can see uh, it's not necessary they are like uh, consecutive like here data and code segment they are uh, consecutive like data segment starts from 1000 and ends at 1FFF and after immediately after this one from 2000 uh, address uh, the code segment is starts and ends at 2FFF so, but here you can see uh, this area is in inside the member is empty if, uh, similarly this area is empty and so on and also this area is also empty so it's not necessary uh, that they are like consecutive uh, there's possibility they can overlap we will discuss how they can overlap and so on but here we have shown that for extra segment the starting address of the extra segment is uh, shown are hold by the extra segment register a stack segment a starting address is hold by the or is inside the stack segment register similarly for this code segment and the uh, data segment register hold these uh, addresses here so the this segment is nothing but an area uh, which uh, which is inside the memory so 
a program can have more than four or six segments but only access four or six seg segments at a time not more than that one uh, there are uh, four segments and we know that there are two other segment registers uh, FS and GA so uh, we are not discussing them here we are discussing only four four of these segments so the program uh, any program can have more than four uh, or uh, six but it can only uh, access the uh, four or six segments at a time here this is the limit for example uh, this code segment is this area so uh, code should be limited to only this portion of the code segment to avoid the uh, effects of segment overlapping or violation to avoid the violation of the segment here you can see this is the overlapping concept for example this is the imaginary concept so a stack segment is overlapped at the data and data is overlapped at the code um, this is the uh, possibility it is possible they can overlap to avoid this one we have to check either they are overlapping or not but usually the operating system maintains um, this whole uh, uh, segments where to put them and so on so we have a stack segment data segment and all these so we have to avoid not to all of these segments and this is the conventional example like we are going to summarize this one we have uh, effective address this code segment and we have the uh, instruction pointer here so we have the code segment for ss for a stack and so on this is the description and default offset addresses that go with them so these are uh, the default values for code segment we have the instruction pointer offset then we have the stack pointer and base pointer for the stack segment and here eip is for the uh, 386 and above and to access the program we have the code segment and stack pointer or base pointer they are being used uh, for the uh, offset and then data segment either we can use BX DI SI and 8-bit or 16-bit number so it is possible that we, we can use BX DI SI or any 8-bit or 16-bit value uh, value to uh, access XSS data here the same 8-bit uh, or 32 32-bit uh, 32 values can be added uh, directly added with the data segment those values are can be like EBX EDI ESI EAX ECX EDX and so on either these register values can be used as an offset or can any constant can be used as offset however you can see in code segment and stack segment they have their special offset instruction pointer IP or stake pointer or base pointer they are being used as an offset here these are the extended versions for the 32-bit representation uh, they are being used as a uh, offsets for the code segment and uh, stack segment and for the extra segment we have the DI register so same DI register can be used uh, to hold uh, any offset or any displacement for data a segment or maybe for the extra segment or they have the within the uh, with this uh, in string instructions so we can use DI when uh, in the extra segment so we can use this one for a string destinations where we can uh, store that one okay so after that okay so now we will discuss about the uh, TPA or transient program area. What is TPA or what is transient program area? Uh, the TPA or transient program area holds the disk operating system or does. This is the oldest operating system and the new operating system in Windows based new operating system. Uh, they are based on this DOS or DOS operating system. So this transient program area uh, holds the uh, DOS operating system other programs that control the computer system so operating system and uh, the controlling uh, routines which are part of this operating system 
they are all stored in this TPA or transient program area. So TPA is the first available area of memory above drivers and other TPA programs or trans transient program area programs. Okay, uh, and this area is indicated by the free pointer maintained by the DAS. So there is no uh, way you can access this one. This area is reserved for the this operating system does. The program loading is handled automatically by the program loader within the DAS. So whatsoever the program you are loading or whatsoever is, um, is maintained, the program is maintained by the DOS. It's used by the program loader which is part of the DOS. One of the main feature of this uh, real addressing mode or segment plus offset addressing mode uh, that's called the relocation. So segment uh, plus offset addressing modes, mode, uh, it allows us uh, or the operating system to relocate uh, programs into memory or relocate segments inside the memory. So this program that we are relocating is one that can be placed in any area of the memory and executed without any change. There will be no change because the segment register is only uh, register that will be changed otherwise there will be no change in uh, any other registers. And the relocable, relocatable data or the data that can be replaced in any area of memory and used without any change to the program. Now the reason or because of the memory is addressed uh, within a segment so we are accessing memory or accessing memory within the segment uh, we are not concerned either where the segment is because we have one reference point so the memory segment can be moved to any place in the memory system without changing any of the offset address because we are changing the whole complete segment so we will not change any offset address only uh, the contents of the segment register like the code segment or the data segment register they will be changed uh, and the reference or the offset or the other register values they will not be changed. So only uh, the segment register must be changed to address the program in the new area of the memory. Windows programs are written um, assuming that the first two gigabyte of memory are available for code and data so it's possible you can change. What are the pros and cons of this uh, real mode addressing or segment plus offset uh, mode addressing. The advantages are it allows easy and efficient relocation. This is one of the advantage. Uh, low relocation of code and data. To relocate code or data only num the number uh, and the relevant segment register needs to be changed as we discussed in the previous slide. And what are the consequences? A program can be located anywhere in the memory without making any changes to its address. Uh, to its uh, addresses or uh, whatsoever the location is. So addresses are not absolute but offset rel relative to the start of the segment they are. So we can relocate whole program only segment register or code segment register its value will be changed. Uh, we are using the uh, instruction pointer so this instruction pointer is the only thing uh, which is accessing within the segment register so whatsoever the segment register value is we will offset with the instruction pointer and we will relocate the uh, any instruction that we are executing and program writer needs to worry about uh, actual memory structure or memory map of the computer used to execute it so it is the headache of the program uh, writer what are the main disadvantages of this uh, real mode uh, it requires complex hardware uh, and for address generation, uh, hardware for the address generation and uh, address computation and address computation delay uh, for every uh, memory access is reasonable uh, like it's, it's very high compared to the other addressing um, uh, memory modes or like other modes. So uh, one is the, it has the uh, complex hardware, second thing, uh, second disadvantage is uh, address computation delay and the third is software limitation. What is the limitation? That program size limited by segment size and we know that segment cannot be more than 64 kilobyte. So it can be only 64 kilobyte uh, with the 8086 or 8088. So these are the limitations and the other limitations 
as we discussed that it's only fixed to 64 kilobyte uh, and segment cannot begin at any arbitrary memory address like with 20 bit memory addressing we can only begin at address uh, addresses starting with 0h such as 16 byte intervals uh, and uh, the principle is difficult to apply with 80286 and above with segment register like remaining at 16 bits like 80286 and above uses 24 and 32 bits so we have to add uh, for 24 bits we have to add uh, two zeros in 16 bit register we were going to add uh, one zero at the end we are not adding but we were appending zero to make it uh, 20 bits but for 80286 and above architecture they are using 24 and 32 bit addresses so they they have to add two zeros or three zeros or two zeros or four zeros uh, at hexadecimal uh, zeros or hexadecimal digits to make them 24 or 32 bit but uh, still they have the 16 bit segment registers and there is no protection uh, protection mechanism so programs can overwrite operating system code segments and corrupt them because to protect uh, if we relocate and sometimes the relocation uh, overlap on the other segments or maybe on the uh, area where the operating system is running and so on so to overcome these limitation another mode was designed or investigated or proposed so that mode is called the protected mode in this protected mo mode memory addressing uh, the there are some operating systems uh, they operate in 16 bit or 32 bit environments and DOS uses 16-bit environment so most of the Windows application use 32-bit environment called the Win32 and the MS-DOS, PC-DOS and Windows 3.1 operating system use require only 16-bit instruction mode we will discuss what is instruction mode and instruction mode is accessible only in the protected mode such as Windows Vista and so on so for those op operating system which use 32-bit and so on we need protected memory addressing what is protected memory addressing this protected memory addressing is available not in 8088 or 8086 it is only available in 80286 and above means all the new architectures this protected memory addressing mode it gives us access to data and programs located within and above the first one megabyte of memory uh, this is the one advantage we are not limited to only that area and the protected mode is where windows operates so this is the uh, area where windows also operates uh, in place of a segment address the segment register so we, there, there, was a, uh, there was only one segment register uh, for example code segment data segment um, and all these they contain the starting point but here the segment register has additional information within that 16 bit it has additional information what is that additional in information uh, it contains selector that selects a descriptor from a descriptor table so there are two concepts um, uh, three things that we have to note here one is this uh, the segment address whatsoever the segment address is it has three parts uh, two uh, mainly two parts one is called the selector then we have a descriptor so selector and descriptor so selector that selects descriptor and descriptor uh, uh, is being selected from the uh, descriptor table so the descriptor it describes memory segments location length and write access so selector selects descriptor and descriptor has these this information segments location segments length and the rights to access uh, access this uh, uh, segment so these are the general concept uh, that, that is the general concept about this uh, protected mode memory addressing so first thing there is a selector and this segment register contains selector and that selects the descriptor 
so inside the selector we have descriptor and descriptor has other information segments location length and so on and these descriptors are placed in the descriptor tables uh, in main memory so we will see how these all descriptors are placed what is inside those descriptors how information like the segment location length and SS rights they are placed inside the uh, descriptor table now there can be multiple descriptors okay multiple segments there are multiple descriptors multiple rights and so on how protection is provided how protection is being provided by uh, in this mode uh, is provided by restricting access to memory segments through privilege levels and the SS rights so this is the way we can provide protection that is a that is the reason uh, this uh, accessing mode or memory accessing mode is called the protected memory uh, uh, addressing what are selectors and what are descriptors uh, the descriptor is located inside the segment register now we have 16 bit segment register code segment data segment uh, whatsoever the segment register are they have uh, one uh, portion which shows the descriptor and the descriptor is located inside the segment register and it describes location length and SS rights as we saw in the previous uh, slide it selects one of the 8192 descriptors so uh, it's possible to have uh, multiple like this there can be one two three up to eight thousand one hundred and ninety two descriptors in the in one of the two uh, descriptor tables we will see what are the two but uh, and there's one descriptor table there will be one descriptor here another descriptor here and so on so there will be multiple descriptors and their names will be descriptor 0 descriptor 1 and descriptor 2 and so on uh, in the protected mode this segment number or the uh, segment uh, address can address any memory location in the system for the code segment indirectly the register still selects a memory segment it means whatsoever inside the segment register either there is a descriptor and other information and but the main thing is we are going to access the uh, we are going to access the memory location inside the main memory so this is the uh, actual way to uh, access the uh, memory in 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 a protected mode so whatsoever we do either we use other information additional additional information inside any segment register but the ultimate ultimately we are going to select any or accessing the memory location so the register still selects a memory segment but not directly as in real mode so there are there is another way uh, the mode is different how we calculate the address from where we want to access uh, the memory location the calculation way is different otherwise the purpose is same in previous uh, real mode we just add two segment plus offset but here we use different mode uh, different method to calculate the uh, address and now we will discuss about the descriptors uh, we will also discuss about the selectors and descriptors uh, in more detail in the uh, coming slides a few uh, after four, one or two slides but now we are going to discuss the general information about the general information about the descriptors there are two types of descriptors one is called the global descriptor and another call another group of descri descriptors are called the local descriptors so global descriptors contain segment definitions uh, this is the main information that is inside the segment definitions that apply to all programs not only single program but all programs which are being uh, executed inside the memory and the local descriptors are usually unique to application for example uh, we have multiple programs uh, one program is running here and the program so we use and multiple programs are running at different memory location and so on so global descriptors define properties of about the uh, segment definitions for all the program that apply for the all the programs but the local descriptors 
they are really unique for the application okay so a global disc descriptor might also be called as a system descriptor and the local descriptor is called the application descriptor so it's only specific are only for the application a specific application as far as the uh, global descriptor is con concerned as we know from its name it defines the whole all the segment definitions for all the programs so the figure uh, in the next slide uh, shows the format of a descriptor for 80286 through uh, code 2 in that figure we will see that each descriptor is 8 byte in length global and local descriptor tables are maximum of 64 kilobytes in length so here you can see uh, we have the first descriptor this one is for the 80286 then we have uh, 80386 and uh, up to P4 and 64 bit uh, P4 this is for the 32 uh, bit 32 uh, bit and this is for the 64 bits here you can see uh, this uh, 80286 descriptor is first portion this portion is always zero then we have SS rights here you can see starting from zero and up to 32 so means uh, this one uh, is four bytes and uh, the, uh, from zero uh, to uh, here there are four other bytes so it completely it is uh, eight byte in in a total length so here only SS write is one byte base is one byte here plus two bytes here so completely uh, complete base is uh, I just uh, remove all these here so I just write it so here this is by default 0 for 80286 these two bytes so from here to here it is completely four bytes four bytes in little here and there are two uh, two four bytes like he from this is uh, four byte and this one is also four bytes so complete is eight bytes so we're going to start with uh, this is the uh, limit limit is L0 to L5 this is 2 byte and offset uh, base this base is uh, 2 bytes here plus uh, 1 byte here so completely base is uh, 16 or uh, 3 bytes or you can say that uh, 24 bits so uh, these bits are B0 to B23 and SS writes so this is co completely uh, complete descriptor so complete descriptor is 8 byte and SS write is 1 byte base is 3 bytes and limit is 2 byte uh, 2 byte long so for this one for this one so we have base 3 byte limit is 2 byte or 16 bits so the segment size can be 1 byte to 64 kilobyte so no note uh, provision for upward compatibility so uh, there is provision for upward compatibility compatibility like uh, we have the same base here so uh, this one is compatible with this one uh, com we will see how we can calculate up to uh, 64 kilobyte in from 1 byte to 64 kilobyte uh, so there's provision for upward compatibility how we can use that one we'll discuss here so it means 286 softwares run on higher proce uh, processors how they are compatible uh, the base uh, for this uh, 80386 and P4 the base is how many bytes one byte is here one byte is here and two bytes here so only base is four byte here and uh, the limit is um, two and a half bytes so it's around about 20 bytes uh, and if the limit is two and a half 20 bits so it can um, uh, relocate or it can locate uh, in between the size of one byte to one megabyte but 
this one additional bit is called the uh, G bit we will discuss what is G bit if that one is higher uh, that bit is high then it can locate up to 4 kilobyte 4 gigabyte how it will be it will locate this one we will discuss in the next slide so this is the global descriptor now we will discuss all these things in more detail like what are the SS rights uh, how we can use base how we can use limit and what are these uh, G, D, and uh, all these uh, uh, registers, uh, all these values here? So, descriptors. Uh, now you have seen that previously you have seen the seen the structure of the descriptor in A0286, 386 up to P4, and uh, for 32 bit, and also for the 64 bit. Now, what is inside? We will discuss in more detail the base address of the descriptor indicate the starting location of the memory segment. We have saw that there was a base part uh, in this uh, descriptor. Here you can see base is 30, uh, 3 byte, here base is 4 byte and so on. So here you can see this base address of the descriptor indicate the starting location of the memory segment. Uh, the paragraph boundary limitation is removed in protection mode so uh, we are not sure that what is the maximum length so base address uh, is the starting location and segments may begin at any address so segments can begin at any address but the starting location uh, is indicated by the base address the G or the granularity bit it allows a segment length uh, as we discussed in the 32 bit uh, and the uh, next 64 bit uh, for the 386 and so on so it allows a segment length from it it can increase segment length from 4 kilobyte to 4 gigabytes in steps of 4 kilobytes so for 32 bit offset address it allows us to uh, the segment length up to 4 gigabytes for 16 bit offset address uh, it allows the segment length of 64 kilobytes how we can uh, use this G? So the G, uh, it allows uh, the length from 4 to 4K to 4G. And in this, uh, if this G is equal to 0, then it will calculate as it is like uh, uh, from uh, up to 4 kilobytes um, and so on. But if G is 0, the calculation method will remain the same. We will see how we can calculate. In case if G is equal to 1, then we will append the limit the limit area so we can see here the limit area uh, in the previous one the limit area was two bytes so we will append this limit area if we uh, if the g is one so append the limit area with f f f h uh, this f f h uh, three by uh, three bit um, uh, hexadecimal digit so the segment size is multiplied appending means as we saw and if we append uh, 0 it means we are multiplying with uh, 10 and so on if we append this FFF it means we are multiplying the seg segment size of by 4k or 4 kilobyte uh, with the limit uh, specifying 1 MB segments and G is equal to 1 for example uh, such as 4k multiplier the maximum segment size is equal 4k multiplied by 1 MB 4k multiplied by 1 MB is equal 4 GB so if we are uh, using uh, with the limit for 1 MB segments and G is equal 1 so 4 kilobyte multiplied with this 1 MB so it can be up to uh, 4 GB so actually uh, limit is 2 byte uh, long so uh, 2 raised power this one the uh, 2 bytes it will be uh, 1 MB segment if G is 1 then we will multiply with the 4 K or so the maximum size will be 4 gigabyte uh, with the 16 K segments like uh, this the systems can address 16 K multiply by 4 uh, GB the, if we use 16 segments now once uh, we have 16k segment close segments like this the system can address 16k multiply by 4 GB is equal 64 terabyte 
it's not necessarily that all uh, will be in the physical memory physical memory is not uh, up to in 64 terabytes but it is possible we can as access the 64 terabytes by in the segmentation this is the example how we calculate the uh, address inside the uh, by using the descriptors now for example descriptor has a base the base is uh, value is two three zero 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 so this is the uh, complete base value um, how many byte this is the four byte base value four byte base value and limit is uh, uh, this is the two and a half byte so if we use this whole value uh, for the base and limit if there is G if G is uh, this bit is 0 then the segment will start this is a starting address of the segment this is the starting address of the segment here and segment end how we will calculate segment end so 2300 0, 0, so the same uh, base plus the offset the offset is uh, 0, 1 2 f f hexadecimal so it will be uh, 2 3 0 0 1 2 f f h 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 hexadecimal digits so we just add these two base n and the segment size will be uh, this is the uh, segment size so segment size will be 1 2 f f plus 1 hexadecimal because if we are starting from the 0 so it will be uh, 1 3 0 0 uh, is equal 19 multiplied by 256 bytes so it will be uh, this is the complete size of the uh, whole uh, segment area but in case if g is equal 1 if g is equal 1 so the actual limit will be limit value will be added with 4 uh, k or multiplied with 4 k so now the new value for this so we append the limit in the descriptor by FFF -F. Uh, so limit is appended in here now the segment start address will remain same but the size of the segment will increase how it will increase so we will add if we will add this one segment and will be two three uh, zero 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 and so on plus this uh, limit value so the actual end address will be this one and the segment size is this one so the complete address or complete whole, whole uh, area will be 4k multiplied by 1300 1300 hexadecimal so this was about the how to calculate the uh, memory starting address and the ending address and uh, complete uh, segment uh, limits now there are some SS rights either we can assess the right uh, assess the segment either we can read we can write or so, so on so there's a ss write byte there's one byte uh, area inside the descriptor so it controls the access uh, to the protected mode segment it describes the segment function in the system and allows complete control over the segment so uh, some segments may be write protected where you cannot program cannot write or application cannot write in those segments and so on if the seg segment is data segment the direction of growth is specified in which direction it will grow and so on if the segment grows beyond the limit beyond its limits the operating system is interrupted indicating the, the general protection fall this is uh, error sometimes you will get the protection fault or you are exceeding the limits uh, which is given inside the um, and this uh, descriptor so you can also specify whether a data segment can be written or write protected so these are the ss write bytes we will see what are the ss write bytes and what is information in those in that byte so here is the uh, one byte this is called the ss write byte so uh, access rights byte there are different it is divided into different fields a r w r slash w e d r c e s d p l and p uh, these names 
uh, or these letters may differ uh, in some documentation, documentation uh, in internal documentation, but their function is almost uh, are similar. So, if this byte, uh, this bit of the SS write byte is zero, it means segment not SS or cannot be uh, accessed. Uh, uh, seg uh, segment has not been accessed. Uh, but here, uh, if this bit is one, it means segment has been accessed. Similarly, these three by uh, three bits, one, two, and three. If E is equal to zero, or this bit, a third, a fourth bit, uh, is zero, it means uh, descriptor describes a data segment. Otherwise, if it is one, it means the descriptor describes code segment. So, this E has uh, if this bit is zero it means data segment or uh, descriptor is describing the data segment otherwise if it is one then the descriptor is describing the code segment similarly for ed or c ed if ed is equal to zero then segment expands upward in the memory uh, uh, the data segment expands in the upward memory if e is equal to zero if E is equal to 0 means we are dealing with the data segment and if ED at the same time if ED is equal to one, 0 it means it's expanding in the upward direction and if it is 1 then ex uh, segment expands in the downward or the uh, for the stack segment downward direction if W is equal to 0 then data may not be written or d means uh, write uh, for the R or W if w is equal to 0 data may not be written or w is equal to 1 data may be written and if e is equal to 1 we are dealing with the code segment if at the same time if this 2 uh, uh, bit number 3 in this one if it is equal to 0 when e is equal to 1 ignore the descriptor privilege level if c is equal to 1 it means we have to abide by the privilege levels if r a read uh, r is equal to 1 if the code segment may not be read if r is equal to 1 code segment may be read so these there are different uh, descriptions uh, for the uh, all these bits similarly for this uh, bit number 4 or the fifth bit of this access write byte it has the uh, if it is 0 it means this is the system descriptor or the general descriptor uh, and if it is one then code or data segment descriptor and so on there are also two bits uh, inside the SS writes bit number five and bit number six so these two bits just define the uh, descriptor privilege level uh, their combination can be zero 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 one uh, one zero and one one so these are the privilege levels we will discuss what are those privilege levels and so on so these two bits they define the privilege levels uh, uh, sets the privilege levels for the segment now if a program or any application uh, they have their request privilege levels they request that we want to apply these type of operations or uh, we need these type of privileges to perform anything uh, on the uh, segment so there are RPL or requested privilege levels RPL and we have the uh, uh, sorry the DPL so they are being they are being compared uh, with each other before uh, going to perform anything on the segment so if the uh, S this RPL level, RPL level is greater than DPL or RP RPL level is equal to the DPL then uh, the application can allow access uh, to the segment otherwise uh, it depends on the value of this C or uh, the ignore the descriptor privilege level or not so if, the, if we ignore for example if it is 0 then we don't need to uh, abide by this uh, DPL or the privileged rights so uh, we will discuss uh, what are these uh, SS rights are there or uh, descriptor privilege levels there's a last bit that's called the uh, P 
bit or bit number 7 is shown as p if p is equal to 0 it means uh, the descriptor is undefined if p is equal to 1 that means uh, the segment contains a valid base and the valid uh, limit so because we use base and limit uh, uh, bytes inside the descriptor to access the segment to access the segment so if uh, it is p is equal to 0 it means uh, this descriptor is undefined and it's not being used uh, the other information inside these 8 bits is irre irrelevant if this bit is 1 it means uh, there's valid information inside this um, uh, descriptor and that information like the valid base and valid limit and so on but the other writes like the DPL, S and E they define the other writes or the other uh, uh, privileges uh, you can perform actions over the uh, segment now we will move to the uh, next slide in this slide uh, we are going to discuss about the descriptor table now there's one descriptor we discuss about these descriptors like inside the descriptor there are SS write byte there is the base uh, base and there is limit and so on so what is the descriptor table because inside this table there will be multiple descriptors not only one but multiple descriptors now descriptors are chosen from this descriptor table uh, by the segment register now the segment register selects the descriptor from the descriptor table so this segment register contain uh, a 13 bit selector so inside the segment register this is a uh, 2 byte or 16 bit register so inside this uh, segment register 13 bits are used as a selector to select the uh, descriptor a uh, table selector bit there's also one table selector bit and request privilege level feed also so this is RPL is also inside this um, segment register so one bit is for the table selection table selector bit and then we have uh, request privilege uh, two bits so 13 bits for the selector one bit for the table selector and we have two bits for the uh, request privilege level so RPL uh, so TI bit or table selection bit uh, selects either the global or the local descriptor table so either we are selecting global or we are selecting local descriptor table and the RPL is the uh, request privilege level uh, request the access privilege level of a memory segment as we discussed in the so if the privilege, privilege levels are violated system normally indicates an application or uh, indicates an application or privilege level violation application violation or the privilege level violation here this is the segment register as we discussed in the previous slide there is there are 13 uh, bits for these as a, you, they are being used as a selector and there are table selector uh, selection bit and there are RPL uh, two RPL bits so in this segment number uh, still the segment number or segment register has the uh, is of the size 16 bits and it's defined the segment through selector and descriptor so uh, we already discussed about the descriptor and now we will see what is inside the selector so uh, not directly as in the real mode but more flexibility uh, is there and we have 16 bit segment uh, register so it's 13 bits, 1 bit, and 2 bit request privilege. If RPL or request privilege level were 00, zero uh, this is the RPL, so starting from 00, zero up to 11, one as we discussed in the previous slide. So this is the highest priority. Highest priority, and this is the lowest priority. So this RPL is compared with the DPL this RPL value is compared with the DPL if RPL value is higher than DPL uh, in this uh, descriptor then what we have to do we have to uh, we can access the um, segment or we can perform anything on inside the segment if uh, uh, lowest this is the uh, lowest priority 
So if the RPL is less than uh, the DPL, then it's not possible. But it depends on the C bit in the descriptor. And this TI, if it is 0, then global descriptor table. If it is 1, then local descriptor table. And selector selects one of the descriptor from uh, 8000 because 2 raised power 13 we can have we can select uh, we can select one of the descriptor from 8192 descriptors in either the global or in the local descriptors so in in the initial slide we we uh, uh, discuss there are 8192 descriptors so these were the contents of the segment register in the protected mode uh, in real mode this is a flat register for 16 bits it is stored the base address but in protected mode it contains something different information these are the privilege levels so here you can see that uh, highest privilege level is level 0 uh, the lowest is the level number 3 so OS kernel has the highest level it can access uh, it has the highest privilege level and these levels are for the OS services and the lowest level is the level 3 and it's for the application so uh, as we saw that it starts from 0 up to 1 1 so what will happen RPLs and DPL segment register and in the descriptor they are compared so they are compared with each other if RPL is greater than or equal to DPL then it will allow access to the segment otherwise not okay so uh, we will see uh, that uh, in the next slide there is one uh, figure that we will see that how the segment register containing a selector and how it choose uh, selects a descriptor from the global description table the entry in the global descriptor table selects a segment in the memory location memory system so th we will see how there are entries in the global descriptor table uh, if the descriptor is zero is called the null descriptor and must contain all zeros and may not be used for accessing the memory so if the descriptor is not being used out of 8192 it should be all zeros or null descriptor so here you can see uh, segmentation uh, this is one of the segmentation example and we have this global descriptor table at this point inside the memory somewhere inside the memory and we have the memory system actually these tables are also in, uh, maintained inside the memory system and how we can how we can access the uh, memory so each descriptor in the table is 8 byte wide uh, 8 bytes wide as we saw in the previous example so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 byte this is for example descriptor number 8 byte segment or uh, the 8 byte uh, segment descriptor number 1 and this descriptor number 0 similarly here there will be descriptor number 2 uh, and so on in, in the memory maximum limit is uh, number of descriptors can be 8 1 and 9 2 and so on so what will happen here if D is our data segment register uh, is the uh, has the value like this one zero 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 and eight hexadecimal zero 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 and eight hexadecimal so what we are doing here so selector is equal to the segment number so what will happen here uh, we can convert it into the uh, binary so all zeros one two three four zeros similarly four other zeros and four other zeros so up to here and then we have 8 so 1 0 0 0 1 2 4 and 8 so this is all uh, 16 bit representation of for this hexadecimal so we are selecting the uh, these three bits are for T and table uh, selection and the RPL request privilege and so on this is the uh, selector uh, uh, description selector so uh, Disc, uh, descriptor we are selecting is the uh, segment or segment descriptor number one our descriptor number one is being selected inside this DS segment register now uh, this is the uh, most significant byte is here 
least significant byte is here so segment number one starts from here and so on and these bits two uh, bytes should always be zero because as we saw in the previous slide there was zero 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 and so on for example if we are using only the 80286 uh, we are considering 80286 so they all will always will be uh, zero there are SS bytes uh, there's one SS byte its value is 9 to an hexadecimal then we have the um, base value and so on so this is the complete base value and so on then uh, we have other areas here here you can see our limit value is 00 f f this is the complete limit value and uh, we have the best value here so how we will compute here so on the offset value this is the uh, best value is here is the one zero 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 so this is the best value one zero zero uh, there are five zeros limit value is zero zero ff uh, so we will plus one this one and uh, this is the uh, limit uh, the segment size will be total segment size will be um, 00 ff plus 1 so the total will be 100 plus with this uh, base so the uh, value will be here so this is the actual limit total limit if we want to calculate total limit then we have to uh, plus 1 with this ff00 so this is the total limit but we want to access this memory area so it will be 1000 and ff uh, this is the uh, GDB, uh, GDT address, uh, base address, so we will neglect. Uh, this is the global descriptor table base address. This is the starting address from where we are accessing descriptors in 8 bytes. So this is the way uh, these descriptors are defined in the global descriptor table. Here you can see this is descriptor number 1, here is descriptor number 0 and so on. And for 286 they will always be 0 and we have SS bytes and so on and uh, the privileges here you can see requested privileges uh, their values there are values are uh, 000 and segment number uh, segment uh, the selector was equal to 1 or descriptor was descriptor number 1 was selected now the privileges they were requested are 00 here and the bit number 7 and uh, 8 in the privilege uh, it was 92 so for example 92 has the SS right byte so SS right byte has the uh, there are 92 so if we represent 9 it will be 1 0 uh, 1 and so on and 2 is equal 0 0 uh, 0 uh, 1 0 so these are the these are the privilege uh, DPL uh, descriptor privilege level so they have the equal rights it means it can access the uh, this segment and so on so uh, this one uh, selector we're using the uh, uh, this address like 000 for the uh, global descriptor table or the local descriptor table so base address to point the start of this uh, required so this is the base address for the descriptor table and so on so that was the way we can use this segment register uh, there is selector, there is table selection, there are two bits for the uh, request privilege levels and so on. Now we will go through, uh, we will move towards the, uh, the topic is called the program invisible registers. Now these code segment, stack segment, data segment, EAX, EBX, RAX, uh, AL, RAX, RBX, these, all these registers, they are visible to the programmer, but now um, we will discuss about the invisible registers here you can see global and local descriptor tables are found in the memory and uh, we know that they are in the memory to access and spe uh, specify the table addresses like in 80286 uh, up to code 2 contain program invisible registers so these registers are not directly addressed by the uh, address by the or cannot be accessed by the software so each segment register contain a program invisible portion used in the protected mode so this is called the uh, cache memory because cache is 
uh, any memory that stores information. Now here in this uh, area on this figure you will see the program invisible register within the core 80286 up to pin uh, uh, from 80286 to the core to uh, microprocessors. Here these are the segment registers these are visible we can program them we can access them in our programs but this descriptor table cache or cache best addresses in this descriptor table tr uh, local descriptor uh, table global descriptor table base address and the idr these are this area complete area is the program invisible area this complete area is program invisible so these are the registers which are program invisible they are directly accessed by the operating system and the uh, in protected mode we can request by using uh, these uh, segment registers then they are being matched or uh, they select the addresses or these uh, here these addresses from the descriptor table or descriptor cache are being uh, assessed through this global descriptor table uh, registers or local descriptor table base addresses and so on now when a new segment number is placed in a segment register we are using the new segment uh, if we want to define a new segment number and we have to place in the new segment register the microprocessor access a descriptor table as I told you in the uh, previous slide so we uh, place a number in the segment uh, register so microprocessor access the descriptor table and load the descriptor into the program invisible portion of the segment register so held there and used to access the memory segment until the segment number is changed so until we change the segment number otherwise it will hold and use the same segment <clears throat> this allows the microprocessor to repeatedly access a memory segment without referring to the descriptor table so once we have referred the table uh, refer the descriptor table we got the descriptor from there we can hold it we can compare our with our segment register and we can continuously access that segment we don't need to refer again and again um, the term that is the reason we call it cache we don't need to again go back there it's available <coughs> uh, near the register so or near the processor so it can easily access the uh, those segment so there's global descriptor table this global descriptor table uh, register and the interrupt descriptor table register there's local descriptor table register also uh, so they contain the best address of the descriptor table and its limit so so this is the interrupt descriptor table register and the global descriptor they are combination they contain the best address of the descriptor table and its limit means what is a complete limit how may what is the total and when protected mode operation desired the address of global descriptor table and its limit are loaded into the GDTR global descriptor table uh, register so the location of this uh, local descriptor table is selected from the global descriptor table uh, one of the global descriptor is set up to address the local descriptor table so uh, we will use uh, this global descriptions descriptors uh, to access also the local descriptors so the local descriptor table or LTDR register is loaded with a selector if we want to access the local descriptor table the LTDR register or LTDR is loaded with a selector so we load a selector in this one so this selector accesses the access the global descriptor table and loads the local descriptor table address limit and the access rights into the cache portion of the LTT, uh, LDTR or uh, the local uh, descriptor table register so th there's also one TR or task register it holds a selector uh, which access a descriptor that defines a task what a task is uh, most often a procedure or an application so, and it allows the multi-tasking system uh, to which task and uh, to switch tasks another in a simple or orderly fashion so in multitasking system we use this one uh, the task register and all these 
uh, local description, uh, descriptive table registers, and so on. So far, we have discussed about the real mode uh, and the protected mode. We also discussed about the pros and cons in the real mode. And we also discussed the information that we need uh, to access the uh, pro uh, a memory inside the protected mode. Now, there is another mode or memory mode or memory access mode is called the flat memory mode. A flat memory mode or flat memory system is one in which there is no segmentation. Whole memory is flat. We do not divide it into segment. And it does not use a segment register to address a location in the memory. First byte address is always is at the 00, zero and the last location is all F. So address is 40 bits in the flat memory model and segment register is still select the privilege level of the software uh, and there is a uh, in real mode a real mode system is not available uh, if the processor operates in 64 bit mode it's available um, uh, in this mode and protection and paging are allowed in 64 bit mode the CS register or code segment register is still used in the protected mode operation in 64-bit mode. Most programs today are uh, operated in IA32 compatible mode. So the current software operates properly, but this will change in a few years because as memory becomes larger and most people have 64-bit computers. So in that case, uh, this flat mode will be used. So this is the diagram for the flat mode. Uh, you can see uh, this is the linear address, so we can uh, directly access this uh, address our location inside the memory and this complete memory is available. So this was the uh, uh, discussion about memory accessing and now memory accessing modes and now we are going to summarize uh, the lecture. Uh, the all real mode memory addresses are a combination of a segment address, segment, ls, offset. The starting location of a segment is identify the 16-bit number in the segment register, either code segment or data segment, and it is appended with hexadecimal zero, or we are multiplying with 10, it's rightmost n, and the offset address is 16-bit, and it is added to the 20-bit segment address to form the real memory mode address. All instructions are code are accessed by the combination of code segment plus instruction pointer or IP offset address. So data are normal reference through the combination of data segment register or any uh, offset address uh, either in, uh, it is inside the register uh, or the offset is as a constant so we combine them we form the our memory location from where we can access data inside the data segment. Uh, next is 8086 to code 2 uses the BX, DI and SI as a default offset registers for data if 16-bit registers are selected in 386 and above. Uh, can use 32-bit register EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX and EDI and ESI as a default offset register for data and so on. In 80286 microprocessor, it allows memory uh, segment to start at any of its 16 megabytes of memory using 24-bit uh, base address. In 386 and above, they allow memory segment to begin at any of its 4G bytes, 4 gigabytes of memory using 32-bit base address. And this allows 286 memory uh, segment limit of 64 kilobytes. And for 386 and above, uh, uh, memory segment limit of either one, me one megabytes. The segment register contains three fields of information uh, in the protected mode. Uh, 13 bits for the segment register address, uh, segment register address. So we use uh, the uh, selected one of the descriptor from 8192 descriptors from the descriptor table, these 13 bits. And there are some program invisible registers that we discussed uh, that are being used in 80286 and above to access the descriptor tables. 
and each segment register has uh, contains a cache portion that is used to protect in protected mode to hold base address limit and the SS rights and they, uh, they are acquired from the descriptor so we have this cache there are some uh, hidden registers they acquire this information from the descriptor and this cache allows the microprocessor to access the memory segment without getting or uh, without referring again to the descriptor table until the segment registers contents are similar so the flat mode it has uh, it contains one terabyte of memory using uh, 40 bit addresses and it has uh, in future intel plans to increase uh, the address with the 52 bits to access the four petabytes of memory and the flat mode is only available in pentium 4 and core 2 that have 64 bit extensions enabled uh, this is end of the lecture and Hope to see you inshallah in next lecture. Till then, Allah Hafiz.